The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths, in particular, Sally Hardesty and her invalid brother, Franklin. It is all the more tragic in that they were young. But had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hello and welcome to Seismic Cinema. So put your feet up in your pickup truck, truck, grab your horoscope, and prepare to turn vegetarian by the end of the movie. We are Seismic Cinema, um, and I've probably not seen it, although I have seen this now. Paul's probably watched it in the wrong order, so he probably watched 2022 first. And we believe in the power of escapism. And our big recent goal is we want to be a podcast that helps promote not just other podcasts, but other indie artists. So that could be um, directors, that could be authors. We've had offers on before. Could be screenwriters. Um, and today we have some very special guests who Paul's going to introduce. Yeah, welcome to our flesh ripping episode of Seismic Cinema, where we've lured a couple of innocent teenagers and making tabs from the Grey's Taproom podcast to our abandoned farmhouse. How the hell are you doing, kids? <laughs> we We're doing good, fantastic. man. Fantastic. Awesome. I, I like that. That, <laughs> that was I cool. Did. <laughs> Thank you for having us, guys. It's it's awesome to, to finally get to work with you. Very much looking forward to it. I know it's this. been a collaboration in the making since we since since we started anyway. It's been For a, a while. Yeah. I was kept in touch from the kind of was it the indie podcast challenge that we all did and then all kind of carried on from there. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, and we've always been talking about doing like some of the Edgar Wright movies and stuff. And yeah. We just kinda we've kind of settled on this one when we took we put a call out for our jump scare June. The Grey Taproom podcast was here to answer the call i had to jump on it i was yeah. like mike look look <laughs> yeah. they're doing texas chainsaw massacre well, we gotta get on there as as she was reading the post we were both on twitter and she showed it to me and as soon as she showed it to me i looked back down at my phone and i kept scrolling and there it was the same post from you uh, that you guys made and we we're like oh texas chainsaw massacre is on the table well yeah i'll hit them up let's do this <laughs> yeah and do you want to give us a wee kind of rundown of your show as well, just before we, before we get into the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre itself? Yeah. Um, we hang out. We enjoy adult beverages. Lots of them. <laughs> Lots of them. Uh, we talk about movies, music. Um, adult beverages. Adult beverages, <laughs> foods. I mean, you name it, we talk about it. Yeah, we just, we, uh, we're here for a good time. We, we offer a little something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're also world record holders as well. Is that right? We are not. Yeah. Oh, so you're not anymore. That. <laughs> no. Well, well, we uh, at the time, if uh, you may remember, we we used to have a third host, and about six hours into it's about 40 five, hours, five and a half. Yeah, he decided to start playing some copyrighted music in the background well youtube picked it up and shut it down they cut it out so basically all of that is now that was done for nothing yeah well that is putting a depressing twist on the start of this i am so sorry i did not realize that and i well, i'm sorry for bringing it up <laughs> so that's was, okay we've it's what, okay the world record? we uh no 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 it's it's perfectly fine 30 the world record was 36 36 hours we did we did 40 hours no and, we did 41 uh no 42 hours five minutes and 11 seconds i have the screenshot for the, for the longest <laughs> time to prove call. that it did happen. <laughs> yeah that was crazy i kept dropping in like i was yeah. dropping every so often on twitch and you know, like, just kept going and going and going mm. so hats off to you anyway i know it was oh, for nothing yeah. but if it wasn't it was still, for it was still our pretty guest. impressive 
it was it was still fun. I had an awesome time. Oh doing God, it. yes, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, we've been tossing the idea back and forth of about doing a just similar thing. doing something similar, not as long and not trying to go for a record, but more going for um like a a donation. This one's gonna be for charity. Yeah, Where for we, like a charity type deal is we, what we want to do. We do have something in the works that'll probably happen around uh, early December, mm -hmm. probably. Nice. I like a streamathon kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are welcome to be a part of it if you'd like. So it's fun. Hells, hells yeah. Because you do like um you do hundreds of live streams and that as well, don't you? And you, you also do part you do like some stuff on the radio as well. Yes. Yeah, we do have a radio station. Yep. It's stream dot truly radio two four seven dot com. Yep. Slash eight zero zero four slash stream. <laughs> good because I always forget that. <laughs> that's why I always have to copy. I've tuned in a couple of times. I've tuned in a couple of times, and the, the music is, is kick ass. I've seen you make some requests on that before. Thank you. Thank you. Um, We're always looking let, for. Do you want to let everyone know where they can find your stuff, like platforms and whatnot? Uh, yeah. It's on all of the podcast platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Just go TikTok. to our link tree. Yeah, go to link tree slash Grace Taproom Podcast 2. Everything is there. All of it. Even her spinoff yeah. show. Yes. Don't know, how, don't know how you guys find the time. It's just an hour to record, if that. My, my show's 30 minutes. Yeah. This one's an hour. It takes about two to three hours to edit. And then the radio station is literally live. Like we can take music off of YouTube and convert it and just throw it into the station. So just making time. And it's something yeah. that we enjoy to do together. Yeah. And then our uh, our live stream shows that we. Oh, yeah. Do. We just like to get drunk <laughs> after after we've recorded. The after. Episode, we've re yep. Like, OK, let's let's keep drinking live stream time. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. We, we, I love we, these guys. We, we've not done a live stream in a long time. We used to, we did a few back in the day. Yeah. yeah. They're fun. Look, look, Colin, Colin used to get hung up in the numbers. I'd be like, oh, there's, there's five people watching. And then he'd be like, oh, there's only two now. Oh, there's three. Oh, there's Ooh. only one now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. By the way, I didn't, I didn't mean to... <laughs> I do that. <laughs> there's... I didn't mean to promote us on the screen two seconds ago. I hit the banner by accident, but... Before I forget, we probably should say where people can find us and use our fancy new banners. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And we're also on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Pods, and all the other places. We have a website that's building up. And if the Taproom podcast want to have a wee mention on that, you can let us know. And we have a Buy Me A Copy page and a subscription service on Spotify Absolutely. for podcasters. I actually did hit that button by accident. <laughs> I was hovering over it and I accidentally hit it. That's all right. That's all right. <clears throat> yeah. So, like you were saying, Colin, it's that, like true to our tagline. This is probably the first time you've seen it, wasn't it? And yeah, you probably done the same not... as me and watched the new one. Yeah. So that's just going to get into the background or our backgrounds with the franchise. So it wasn't actually the first one I've seen, but. The first one I did see was, as Paul was saying, the 2022 one, which I actually sat down and I was like, oh, this is a another chance to watch a classic horror franchise. And me and Alien just sat and laughed the whole way through it because it was it was just so cringy and just just awful. <laughs> and yeah, same as yeah. me. It was like that I'd watched it, I watched it in the wrong order. I started off at 2022 and went back to the original. Um my first intro to Bubba Leatherface was I play a lot of Dead by Daylight, um, and he's one of the killers on it. So I knew quite a bit oh, of nice. lore from that. So going from Dead by Daylight, then seeing the 2022 movie, which was just a mess, to say the least. Like honking, honking. <laughs> and then... Oh, my God. Yeah, it's horrible. But what about you guys? What oh. is your background to Texas Chainsaw Massacre? <clears throat> Uh, you want to go first? I can, sure. Okay. Uh, my intro into Texas Chainsaw Massacre was when uh, I was younger, uh, teenage years, starting to get into the horror scene. 
um, watching horror movies. And um, that was just one of the ones that was on the list. So we've seen the original one. Um, I can say that I've never seen the second one. And that's not saying a whole lot. No, it isn't. <laughs> I've seen all of them. And the uh, the then the next one would be the remake in uh, 2003. Um, that was like I got to see it in theaters. Did you see the remake before you saw the original? No, oh, I okay. seen the original first. Okay. People seem My to quite God. like the the remake one. I love it. Oh, it's the yeah great. the 2003 one. Yeah, I thought I. I I like parts of it more than the original. I like the remake better than the original. Yeah. Honestly. I love the original very much. Spoilers. But there's... Spoilers for the review. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, my, my intro to that franchise, I think I was probably about eight, seven or eight when I saw it for the first time. Uh, I, got in, I got into horror movies when I was about three, when Child's Play came out back in 1988. I'm showing my age. <laughs> uh, you watched Child's Play when you were three. Yeah, yeah, I saw it when I was when it first came out on VHS. I uh, we were at a family reunion, and my and it all, was your cousin, all my cousins, because my cousin's were, the one who let me watch my first horror well, movie. It was my oldest cousin Reed, and he was like sixteen years old. Oh, okay. so he was like, "Oh, uh, you'd be the cool teenager, older cousin, and we're all gonna watch this scary movie together." Uh, but yeah, that was, and then uh, a bunch of others after that. And then when I was, like I said, about seven or eight, I saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the first time. I was spending the night at my cousin's house and we rented it. Their histories are so much richer than ours just watching that awful <laughs> one on Netflix, isn't it? <laughs> I know it's just it's such a weird, like going back and seeing this one. I was just like, "How did they get it so wrong?" <laughs> and the new one. <laughs> um, oh, the new one. Yeah, yeah, the twenty twenty two one. They they tried to do the thing like uh, how they're doing the new Halloween movies. They're trying to revamp it. Yeah, and it was just a huge hit and miss. They they also deterred from the storyline in lot. in twenty twenty twos. I mean they. Yeah. They said he was an orphan. He was left alone. They he yeah, raised he in an in orphanage. A, yeah, in an orphanage in the middle of a town. Uh, no, no, none he of didn't. that is right. <sighs> yeah, none of that is right. And then they tried to do the thing where they bring the final girl back, Sally. Oh, Jesus! In that one, Jeez. and me messed that up. Yeah, significantly. She, she was in it for what, like five minutes? Oh, Sally. Oh yeah, she killed. was the sheriff. Yeah, <laughs> she got killed. Off. Marilyn Burns. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize, we just, not I before getting that. a chainsaw through the spine and then being able to shoot a shotgun after it. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, oh, I just watched that. I was like, this is so stupid. So yeah. stupid. I did like the uh, the tour bus scene in that. Oh, thing. God, all of them were just all the, slaughtered. the cancel culture kids got, got <laughs> ruined. <laughs> I know. That that what what we're going to do as podcasters, like, all group together and buy a dilapidated town in the middle of America. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's that's a dream. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm for it. Communal podcasts. Yeah, we just take over. Yeah. I'm for it. We'll, Let's do that. We'll just not be too pretentious to big monstrous looking people. <laughs> <laughs> Amos. Oh God. Yeah. Well, well, I don't even know how you can remember that film that well, like, because I didn't even realize Sally was in it. I think I've just kind of shut that that one. It was a home. different. It was a different actress. It was because I think the one that played Sally in the original died shortly before the film oh, really? started so it was a different actress but she looked really really like sally yeah from the original okay cool right do you guys have any fun facts you'd like to share about the movie any trivia that you know because i don't want to just steal your guys thunder so well i do have a few oh, things i've picked out uh we have a few stories from the set actually because uh, the guy that played Grandpa, John Dugan, he was here in town at a haunted house that we used to work at. Was it 13? A, uh, yeah, 2013, yeah. I was pregnant. 10 years ago. Now, here's the fun fact. I had to be his chauffeur around around town. Yep. 
So he came to so do like broke. this whole weekend yeah. at the haunted house and signed stuff. So we've got a chainsaw blade signed by Dugan. We've got a mask that was signed by John Dugan, grandpa. Yeah. We've got a couple of photos, a couple of photos signed by John Dugan. <clears throat> And what's even more funnier than that is when I was pregnant, we couldn't, we didn't know the sex of our kid until November. So it was kind of like along the lines of, is it going to be Scarlet or is it going to be Gunner? Uh, so our son is named Gunner after, after Gunner Hansen. Yeah. <laughs> the original Leatherface from 74. Yep. Nice. Because I was, see before the show, I was like, oh yeah, they named their kid Gunner. And I was like, I watched that and there wasn't a gunner in there. I need to look up why who's gunner and then I've seen it was Leatherface that it actor played it. We've met Gunner Hansen. Yeah. We went to a haunted house convention because we both were in the haunted house industry. So it was like this huge um like trade show. And so he was uh, one of the actors that was there, like talking to people, signing autographs. And we were just uh I mean, we were waiting in line. He's he's nervous. He's oh, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yeah. this guy is my idol. I'm so I excited. I was like, it's just, it's just Gunnar Hansen. Yeah. So we walk up to the table and he's like, Mr. Hansen, can I, can I get this signed? And he's like, sure, come sit down. Yeah. He, so he, he like, let me sit at the table with him. Yeah. And so we he chatted sat, for a while. Um, and so I'm standing there and I've got a cut off t shirt and I have two tattoos on my chest that are Pisces symbols. And he looks up at me and goes, hey, I'm a Pisces too. And starts talking to me about it. And I was like, this is pretty cool. This guy's oh, pretty awesome. Yeah, he, he couldn't have been nicer. He was the best. Yep. One of the one ever, of the nicest celebrities that I think we've ever met. Ever. You ever you ever tried to get them on the podcast? He oh. actually passed away oh, really? uh when Gunner That's not work out then. Yeah, yeah. Unless we can get a Ouija board going. Ooh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't mess with Ouija yeah. boards. <laughs> no, he, he actually Gunner's our gunners first Halloween, we dressed him up as Leatherface and he won his age bracket at a huge Halloween yeah, costume won. contest. Um, so my plan was is to get him to dress up at the next convention that Gunner was gonna be at and take him and do a gunner with gunner picture. Yeah, but he passed away before we could even get the chance. Oh that's a shame. I do. Yeah. I do actually know a fun fact about 74 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. And that is John Larroquette, the, the guy that narrated it yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. His payment for narrating was a single joint. Yep. I heard that one, yeah. E Some days easily pleased. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was the 70s, man. <laughs> <laughs> but a good voice. He had a good voice, a good crisp voice. Oh yeah, oh, some, <laughs> some really interesting stories there. Ah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You got to meet them all. It's, it's good when your heroes live up to their expectations as well. Oh yeah, John Dugan actually frequents Grandpa frequents Louisville quite often. He used to live here, and then he moved to L.A. But he comes back for like specific concerts and shows from local bands and favorites his local bars. Yeah, he used to. Yeah, he used to live here for a little while. Mm -hmm. Not far from us at all. About ten but minute drive. See, see when you drove for him, do you try and suck your fingers? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no. a lot of I've got a lot of questions about the the phrase the haunted the haunted yeah. house industry, but I think that's for another podcast. Sure. <laughs> you guys come on our <laughs> show and we'll do it. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love to hear what that involves but anyway paul you get any fun facts about the movie you want to share none i uh i, I, <laughs> <one>. <laughs> I thought i thought fun facts is your department man it is, I the intros I'm, trying and that's to, it. I'm trying to spread the love a bit by letting other people have a show i'm trying to be less selfish <laughs> i uh i got one on you uh marilyn burns who played sally when she's running out of the house uh, on her way to get into that truck, all the blood that's on her body is at her actual blood. She cut herself up on all those branches when she was filming that scene. So all the blood that you see on her shirt and pants mm -hmm. and her arms, that's her blood. There you go. Oof. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't you like to see her medical insurance bill? 
Oh man. <laughs> no, it's just tree branches. You'll be all right. Spin on it and keep going. You're good. <laughs> rub, rub some dirt, dirt on it. You're yeah, good. rub some dirt <laughs> on it. I've got my usual five seismic statements and some bonus ones if you want to hear them, then we can get into the the main review. So the the idea for the movie came when the director Toby Hooper. Um, uh-huh. You might know this one. He was in a hardware store and he was getting stressed out with the crowds at Christmas time. And he was like trying to think how he could get through the crowd. And then he looked over and saw a chainsaw. And then that's where he had the idea for the film. I'm assuming he didn't kind of follow through with um, <laughs> massacring the, the customers. But that's, that's a bit of a strange admission. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. If it hadn't happened, then uh, he'd be like prime suspect for anything in that yeah. town. This one's um, number two is really fun. So the the shirt that Leatherface wears was dyed, so they weren't able to wash it. So he apparently, or not apparently, he wore the same shirt for four weeks. So none of the other cast members wanted to sit anywhere near him because he was stinking. Oh, nice. That sounds Damn like that. haunted house right that, there. That checks out. That checks out, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got to stay in character yeah he's a method okay. actor that was certainly a help uh, yeah. number three people actually walked out of the sneak preview of the film because they found it too horrifying that was that was number three i can see that number four was really interesting uh Bryanston distribution used this movie to launder money for their production company um, and then the owners of the company ended up getting arrested and then having to pay the actors $25,000 each because apparently they only got like a tiny amount of money originally when they filmed the film. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. I didn't know that one. I, I didn't know that either. I don't know these oh. things either. I just look up IMDb before I do a podcast. But still, it teaches you. It teaches you. <laughs> That's so, so, so do we. <laughs> so do we. The, the last one, um, the, the gas station that's featured in the film is getting turned into like a Bed tourist attraction to do with the movie. And there's going to be like music and a restaurant and different things like that as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Road trip. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> She's want the she's want the bonus ones. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Nobody ever says no. It's great. Um, <laughs> well, Guillermo no. del Toro. I hope I get the name right, the director. He, I never say the first name Guillermo. right. Guillermo. He, he, um, he became like I said in the intro, he actually did become a vegetarian after watching this film. Ooh. Really? That's quite funny, isn't it? I, like, soon I was watching it, I didn't think there was actually that much blood for it. In, oh, in did you not hear that the, the the whole soundtrack for the film is just the noises that an animal would hear in a slaughterhouse? Yeah. Uh, I did hear that, actually, yeah. But I don't think I noticed that at the time when I was watching it. <laughs> just on what you were saying, Paul, the second bonus one was that only one person in the movie was killed by a chainsaw. Oh, yeah, yes. Franklin. It was Franklin. Yep. And the last one, the Jimmy. the brother actor, Jim, can't read it this time, Jim Seed, you'll, you'll get me right here. It's Jim Seed, Seedum. Can't, can't read, the, read the name. Anyway, the brother of Leatherface was actually 20 years older than the grand, the, the John Dugan that played the grandfather. Uh-huh. John Dugan was the youngest. I think he said he was one of the youngest ones on, on set. set. Yeah, he was. He was barely, or like I a, think he was nineteen or twenty. Yeah, nineteen or twenty years old. Yeah, he so just looked like an old man. That's the seismic seismic statements then for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hell yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, watching it wouldn't make me turn turn vegetarian or vegan. It would just make me even more carnivorous. <laughs> yeah, we were actually we were when we were watching it last night. I started I because my my dad gave us a bunch of uh, deer sausage. I thought, man, that sounds really good right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I want to eat, uh, eat some sausages. <sighs> I'm only a couple of years into really getting into the horror 
the horror genre, but I need to learn to stop eating when I'm watching it because I've been put off uh, Doritos by watching the thing at Paul's when the scene with the dogs happened. Oh, I was yeah. eating lunch, I think, then, when I was watching Silence of the Lambs. And then I was eating something today when I was watching me watching parts of this. So I, I need to stop doing that. <laughs> I, I mean, there's only like two movies that I've seen that has completely made me like while I was eating, make me not want to eat. What was it? Indiana Jones. Oh, the monkey brains. No. When they cut the snake open still, oh, yeah. it still <laughs> ugh, makes me gag. And then human centipede. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll see that's a human centipede. You seen it, Paul? Yep. We're not reviewing that. It's like, <laughs> uh, it's like, Two girls, one cup without a cup, and somebody's mouth. Yeah. So done. Reese's. Yeah. I'm familiar it's with the concept. Anyway, let's get away from human, <laughs> human centipede uh, and yeah. into the main review. <laughs> right, who's starting us off then? Oh. Guest start. First views. The season veterans. Okay. All right, we're reviewing it first. Yeah, let's go. No, right. just just get the ball rolling with a thought or a memory or a yeah. light or didn't light just to get the conversation. Okay. Franklin rolling. is an annoying ass hat. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, yes. I didn't want to be the one to say it, but no. I'll say it. No, please. Yes, we can all get it. Hashtag Franklin sucks. Oh my god. <laughs> That's all um, he did was complain the entire time yeah. and then try and make friends with the crazy hitchhiker. Let's pick him up. Can I give you yeah. a really interesting thought I had watching it for the first time? It didn't really make sense because I've seen Leatherface running about. But uh -huh. see, when they left him outside and he was getting pure excluded from all of the social bits, I was like, uh, five. Five. <laughs> um, I was like, does does he become? I was like, does he become Leatherface because he's getting socially excluded? That was actually a thought that I wrote down. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. I, I, interesting. Think. Unless he can grow new legs and start walking again. Right. That was the main. That was the main like stumbling block to my idea. But <laughs> like, if you hadn't seen it, anyone anyone could be wearing the mask. So. Yeah, Colin, you have a very unique mind, and I love it. Was it like, <laughs> was it like with the dogs and the thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh God, honestly. Why are they Some behaving stuff. like that? Why are they shooting the dogs? <laughs> 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 yeah, the whole time it starts going. I really hope the dogs are good. The hope that dogs are going to be okay. And like you really, really don't. You really don't. <laughs> the dog is no. the dog. The dog yeah. is never okay. But yeah, Franklin was annoying. Like that's what I was saying to my girlfriend. Like he just kept going, Sally, Sally, Sally. I'm like, just shut the fuck up. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And then, then, then he gets stuck inside the 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 house, and and he, if I have any more fun, I just don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. Yeah. <laughs> Are you like four? I'm, I'm glad we weren't supposed to like him because he failed in that regard. Yeah. yeah. Well, what were your views on the actors generally? Like, I think this the film had a lot of strengths. I don't really feel like the actors were the strength. Is that is that a general consensus, or do you have yeah. different views? Yeah, well, on some of the actors, uh, I liked the hitchhiker. Oh, I, God, I love yes. his character. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I can see that. I love his character a lot. Uh, one of the things uh, the where uh, he when they picked him up in the van, and he's just saying some nonsense, and then he pulls out the knife and cuts his hand. No, then, he took Franklin's knife. Or he took, no, he had it. It was his. Oh, knife. he cut and then he handed it to Franklin. Yeah, and that's then right. he tried to cut Franklin's hand. Yeah, and then that's when they kicked him out of the van. He cut his arm or his arm. Yeah, yeah. and then Franklin getting mad, trying to get cut, mm -hmm. and then after that, he's. And they're like pretending to cut his own hand. Well, he was like, trying to think it through. Like, could you do this to yourself? And they're like, "What are you doing? No, stop! You're being <laughs> weird." And then the 
the uh, I noticed on the van after uh, the hitchhiker cut his hand mm -hmm. when they let him out, when he smears the mm -hmm. blood on the van, it's the side profile of a plague doctor mask. Hmm. I didn't even think oh, about was that. that. Was yeah. I, I, I noticed that last night. Okay. <laughs> I've seen this movie like a thousand times and, and I just, just now, just noticed, now it. noticed it. Yeah. Um, I think the actors, they all had like they were all along the same lines of there wasn't one that was better than the other. They they mm -hmm. evenly distributed. Franklin was the worst though, right? Do what? Franklin was the worst though, right? Oh yeah. Well, uh, but that was just his character. The yeah. actor that plays uh Kirk. I don't know his name. He's the one that had the the like the floral shirt. On in the white pants, the curly hair. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Like that. The one who looked like he was fifty. Yeah, he uh -huh. looked like he was old enough to actually be there all all their fathers. <laughs> Gross. But he's playing a teenager, uh, right? But I didn't. I don't really like uh, parts of his performance. Mm. A lot of in the van stuff, and then his first encounter of walking up to the house. It just felt like they might have grabbed him at the last minute. Like, hey, yeah. we need a spot to fill. Yeah, we've done that before many a times on our movie shoots. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And of course, you know, Sally steals the show. She's brilliant. Oh, yeah. But you don't expect it to be Sally until right. Franklin gets the chainsaw through the gut. Yeah. Oh, that was a relief. I, th I think it's the same a lot of other films. Like, my favorite, I probably like the first half of the movie better because I'm all about the build up and the, like, the one you were talking about with the hitchhiker on the, the bus. That was just so. Mm -hmm. eerie like you just felt really kind of uneasy on the edge i a kind of uneasy feeling because i watched it in a few segments i tend to watch films in segments just trying to fit trying to fit everything in at the moment um so i didn't actually realize to the second watch through that you see one of the captors at the gas station earlier on in the film so when i yeah. rewatched it and i noticed that i was like oh okay that's interesting it makes that scene really um, kind of eerie as well. So, yeah, I don't, yeah, I've, 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 I've got a really question like about the gas station. Yes, Paul. I was gonna Go. say, sorry, I've got a question about the gas station. See, like the guy that comes out um, and tells him to like not go to the Franklin house, like to go away. Mm -hmm. Was that the the dad? Uh, you know, the one when they go, like, oh, I've got some good barbecue inside and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the dad that kept yes. Sally there? Yeah. yeah. So why was he telling them to not go to the Franklin house? Like, just stay here. It could have been get, reverse psychology. Gas. Yeah, that's... Or just I to stay there so they could get him from the gas station. I, I, I took it as, like, a reverse psychology. He knows, like, if you tell teenagers not to do something, that's what they're going to go do it. Yeah. yeah okay. Because he's going to tell them about it. Don't go here because... And they're, and they're going to think, oh, man, that sounds really cool. We should go check it out. Right. So he 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 knew he knew what he was doing. I but think. But not only that, but they said before he said that they they told him that it was their old house. Right. So if it was your old house, would you still go or not go? Yeah, true, true. Just wasn't sure when I heard that. I was kind of like, when I seen him at the end, I was like, oh, he was warning them away. Mm -hmm. Why would they do that? Would you not rather be like, oh yeah, it's right down that road kind of thing? It's like there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just, that's something that's confusing me. It was an interesting setup, just in the sense of like they were robbing all the graves. Um, so when they when they mentioned that bit about loads of barbecue, I was like, "What have they got? Some of the have they Probably. got some of the, the warm bodies in there?" Um, what was I going to say? It was to do. No, it's gone. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've got my first. I've got my first day uh, of my three questions, which actually relates to the bit on the the bus. So okay. I thought this was a good time to mention it. So I was listening to uh, your Would You Rather episode uh, earlier today, and it gave me the idea for d doing a few Would You Rathers related to this movie and other horror movies. So okay. I have a yeah. first I like it. question for a wee bit of inspiration on a Sunday. So all three of you can give your answer on this one. So would you rather give the hitchhiker – a lift, this hitchhiker, or go and visit Hannibal Lecter in his cell. Not in his cell, but outside it. So if you had to pick one, 
is Hannibal talking? Lecter is he chained or is it just he's in or he's cell. free? You're is your Clarice and you're visiting Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Okay. Or pick not up scene. the hitchhiker. You're not you're Jodie Foster in this scene. I can answer not sure, that. That's your two choices. Who wants to go first? I'll oh. I'll go. I got Hannibal Lecter. You're I got the hitchhiker. Lecter? My brother is the hitchhiker, so yes. I live with that every day. <laughs> but but he's not a harmful hitchhiker. Mm -mm. He's more of like if Johnny Knoxville or Steve-O was the hitchhiker. <laughs> <laughs> He's that hitchhiker. But no, I, I would choose uh, Leatherface. You mean not Leatherface, Hannibal Lecter? Hannibal Lecter, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hitchhiker. All, all this Texas talk. <laughs> no, because I I am a fan of the, psycho the psychology behind serial killers and how they work in their mind. So I would... I would talk to Hannibal Lecter about stuff like that. Intellec know. In intellectual conversation yeah. or a fun time? Getting my arm cut by a uh, hippie in the middle of Texas or blocked off where I can't be hurt. Yeah, but he could still make you kill yourself. No. He could talk <sighs> you into killing yourself. No. Okay. We've actually had most promotion now. <laughs> and ah, what about you? One. Sorry, what I keep call? pressing the buttons. Um, you call you I would tiebreaker. Go, we need a tiebreaker. I would go visit um, Hannibal, I think, because see if you're on the bus, he could like get you with that knife. And yeah. that guy was crazy and a weird man. And all his family had worked in meat. And um, but Hannibal is behind bars and that scenario and he's quite pleasant for the most part despite his tendencies, tendencies. so yeah I, I would vote for a visit in hannibal and his cell yeah Fair enough. plus i've i've had somebody come at me with a knife before i don't want to do that again i have too <laughs> I have. i'm here for a good time not a long time exes are crazy <laughs> <laughs> what about you paul uh well, just to be a bam and tie it all up, I go to Hitchhiker. Um, but you know what? I'd have paid them two bucks for the photo, and we'd been we'd get along <laughs> fine and be pals. That's what it would be. Thank <laughs> you. I hate I'd when like that. Hear, I'd like to hear stories and let me, let me tell them about slaughterhouse. All good, all fine. That that happened to me on holiday once. Like somebody like took a photo of me and tried to sell it to me. I was like, I didn't ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> Then do they cut your arm? No. Okay. But don't don't go to Havana. It's overhyped. Yeah. Cuba. Sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. it's too busy. Too many people pestering you. Gross. Ooh. Anyway, well, that was the first segue. I thought that was just a fun wee that is a good spin, one. spin on your, your podcast ideas. So. Love it. So what else? So we've talk, we'll talked about... We talked about the bus, the gas station. We talked about our love for Franklin. Oh yeah. What are other that. highlights and lowlights from the film? Oh. One of one of the ones that stick out in my mind because I lost it last night laughing. So you know when Leatherface when she locks herself in the house when Sally runs into the house and locks herself. About. Yeah. So she like he the Leatherface takes the chainsaw and just starts cutting the crap out of the door, and he busts through. Why didn't he just cut around the door handle and then open the door? Why did he have to cut the door? And then the his dad or the older gentleman from the gas station, he when he opens the door, he goes, he cut up my damn door. It got so bad at the door. The, I thought you were going to talk about when uh, Kirk goes into the room. Oh, that one too. So there's this in the scene where Kirk goes into the room and Sally is. No, it's not Sally. Not Sally uh, the uh, other girl. The other girl, Rachel. Rachel. I think she's, it's Rachel. She's in Don't the ice chest. That. Yeah. And she's laying there, and when like, he you opens can hear her it, bang and... on it on the on the door to try to open it. So he opens it up, unlocks it, opens it up, and she wakes up and starts flailing about. And then he turns around, and Leatherface like rushes into the room, and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> but see the funny thing about uh going back to the fun facts about that is uh toby hooper 
didn't tell him he what he didn't tell him that Leatherface Gunner, was going to be so, behind. Yeah, he told Gunnar Hansen, "Okay, we're not going to tell him this, but on on this mark, I want you to fire up the saw and run in there and just scare him." So, so he did it, and when Kirk turns around and that scream, <laughs> that was his actual reaction to being scared by Leatherface. <laughs> you have to go back like i rewound it like four we, or five times just to hear him go ah! yeah yeah uh, we we kept going like we would watch it and then rewind it just to start that scene over again and i thought it was like one of the chicken noises in the back <laughs> no that was horrifying see that scene yeah. with the chicken oh yeah <laughs> i saw another fun fact that the all the kind of animal remains and bones they were actually from a local vet why do the vets keep all them bones? <laughs> we need we need an inquest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, See that guy, did... Was that not Jerry that went into the chest freezer? Was Kirk not the first one that went in and got his head bashed in? Uh, uh, Jerry's Jerry the was, one. Jerry was the bus driver. Yeah, Jer Jerry's the one that was Sally's boyfriend. No. Yeah, Jerry. No, Kirk was Jerry Sally's, Sally's, Sally's boyfriend. boyfriend. Was Kirk Sally's boyfriend? Oh, no, 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 no. Jerry. Kirk was with Jerry Pam. Was. Jerry, Jerry's the one yeah. that had the blue shirt and the insanely hairy chest. Yes. I think that was Kirk, was it not? The Kirk was the first one. They went into the house. Oh, sure. yeah, no, I got it mixed up. It yeah. was, that yeah. was Jerry. I was, yeah. I was just Kirk thinking of my mind who died first. The, Kirk gets his head chopped off, doesn't he, when he's lying on the, the table? The blue, uh, blue shirt guy. Yeah. Blue, he was, blue yeah. Shirt guy. The blue shirt guy. Yeah. He's the one that walked into... He's the one that walked into the house and Leatherface slid the door open and smashed his yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the first one. And then Pam goes in after him. Yeah. And then Jerry goes in looking for the two of them. And then Sally goes looking for Jerry. It's just a, a chain, a chain of uh, unfortunate events. I don't feel so bad now about forgetting character names after a blue, blue t shirt guy. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's blue t-shirt guy and then there's afro man with the flower t-shirt yeah he's the one that had the afro man with the flower shirt is the one that looked like he was 50 yeah he's the one that screamed yes <laughs> <laughs> sorry i just i'm just getting it right in my own mind because i was thinking like is that right who's who's who jerry is the one with the afro that's sally's yeah. boyfriend because sally yeah. and franklin are rolling through the forest going jerry yeah because me and jace were making fun of that last night <laughs> yeah <laughs> What, what did you guys make of because I made a note that when you first see Leatherface when he pull like having watched it again when he gets pulled into the is that it's not a lift is it it's like a, just a cupboard is it uh, it's it's the so if you get a chance to watch the 2003 uh, it it kind of helps explain it so it's like a back room to a yeah. basement it's like a yeah. secret door kind of a room yeah so yeah. <sighs> Such a my, good my, my initial instincts and i don't i don't know if it was the because you're used to in horror films the music being very dramatic when the villain first appears i wrote down that it was a wee bit of an underwhelming reveal and that it was just totally silent and then they gets pulled away I, I guess i can see why it's horrifying and having watched it again it is pretty brutal um but i just felt i don't know what did you make of the kind of the quiet and the lack of music. Do you think that added to the suspense, or do you think that took away a wee bit? I don't know. Was it meant to have a score though? Because I think mind you're saying about like the animal sounds and stuff. Aye. But was it because they couldn't get like copyrighted music or something into the movie? So that's why it was kind of like they didn't have anything without that. Do, I don't do know. You feel, but... Do you feel that the lack of a score helps or hinders the film? Does it set it apart a wee bit from other ones, or I... do you think it could take away from scenes? I, th I think the lack of music in it uh, actually enhances, enhances the suspense. Mm. On our podcast that we recorded last night with Opinionated Lushes, we talked about Final Girls. And um, at one point during the podcast, I told them that I put myself as the cameraman. Like, that's who I feel like I'm there, no, I'm present. Movie. Like, this is me being here i mean if you don't hear music you can hear the background sounds mm -hmm. like the, you're the you're, perfect you're... example for that is the movie the strangers there's hardly any music in that 
Oh yeah, yeah. and that's good. The Strangers is a good film too. Love but, the Strangers. But yeah, even in Texas, the the lack of music. Like, I think really. it helps because you can hear things. Yeah. You can hear things better. Like yes, the music is one hundred percent setting the mood that sets the tone. You know, as it as it crescendos uh, you can hear that something bad is about to happen and then it gets softer and it's more emotional but if you go back and watch 74 chainsaw massacre you can hear again like when they're rolling through the woods you can hear tree branches you can hear mm. crickets you can hear birds you, sure, yeah during the day yeah. i think that really made it different because they didn't have to force a score yeah no i get it and it does make a wee bit different. I think I did view a lot of the scenes a bit differently the second watch through because the first time you're just kind of following the story and the characters, whereas you do notice a lot of the other details more the second time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even in the 2003 remake, they kind of took that same route and there was a lack of music and you get more of what's actually happening around everybody. You get the sounds of nature you get screams you get the screams you get even when they're in the Bones van breaking. you get the sound of the tires rolling across the pavement mm -hmm. you you just get natural tones mm -hmm. and i th i think to a point in horror having Silence. less music and natural tones is is better it, but it, it depends on what the movie's about right i mean if you got texas chancellor massacre the title pretty much tells you what the movie's about mm -hmm. so you don't need music to enhance that but it does it helps a little bit in certain scenes, but see what you just opened. There's a Colin in, oh, in a movie like Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. There's a time and a place for music. It doesn't need to be over dramatic music. It should it could be subtle. Yeah, just really quiet and subtle music. Because yeah, sometimes music can actually unintentionally make you laugh. Like, did yeah. you ever? Did any of you ever watch the show Dark on Netflix? It was a I think it was a German show originally. Uh uh. No. It just had this really dramatic like, drum roll. All like it happened in like, every episode, and we got to a point where we would just laugh at it every time. So sometimes music can become a bit too cheesy and kind of take over a bit. Yeah, and sometimes music as well can alert you to the fact that something's going to happen. Like yeah. it goes like predictable beats and. Like you know there's gonna be a jump scare happening or if you hear like music and then it just kind of drops then you know something's just about to happen you kind of prepare yourself so it probably did help not having the music just so you didn't have that because a lot of stuff was then like searching the house and stuff so you didn't know when something's going to happen right and then again they probably didn't have a budget to have a composer yeah true true yeah, they were pretty limited because I think this was like a fresh out of well, I don't want to say a fresh out of film school kind of a project, but it was definitely it was friends more of like the, hey, it was definitely more of like in the indie film scene right. at the time, and you can tell that kind of by the quality of the the film, the way it was shot, still better than ours. Right, to pick up the music debate, you ready for question number two? Let's go. Right, would you rather? Go out for paints with leather face and get leathered, <laughs> or go out for paints with Michael Myers. Ooh, it's your choice. Mm. Who are you taking to the? How who, dare you? Are Those you are my two night? favorites. Well, who are you gonna? Who, who are you gonna? Have oh to God, I'm not answering this first. I have to think about I it. I can't go drinking with my favorite because he's a child. Sam, <sighs> trick or treat. Oh, he's an ancient child. <laughs> I don't I, actually uh, have my own answer to this one yet. I need to think about it. It's hard because they're not really talkative, either of them, so they wouldn't be really good conversation. Do you know why I picked that question? It was another nod to Grey's Tap Room and their love for the adult adult uh, beverages. <laughs> <laughs> layers within layers. Yeah. I Plus, think you'd, I might... you'd have to go for pints with them at the Winchester, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh god, oh. yes. Is there another place to go? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> do, you like my, do you like my Shaun of the Dead sign, by the way? Oh god, yes. I, I, I noticed oh, that's that as, awesome. as soon as we jumped oh, on. Oh my gosh, I, I love like it. it. Love it. I right. might have to go with Leatherface, I think. I'm just going with Leatherface because you could caption your social media photos with getting leather with Leatherface, and I think that alone is worth yeah. the admission. Michael would I just can... go in there and try to kill everybody. Yeah. Instantly. Like if somebody says something to him, he's just gonna 
go on a rampage. Do you understand how hard this is for me right now? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You're gonna need another beverage. Colin, yeah. I think you I think you broke her. Did there, you buddy. see what I just did? <laughs> oh no, I'm glitching. I, I think you broke her collar. Colin. Oh, really? <laughs> oh god. Um Paul, you need to you need to get a wee clip of that that segment. That can be our promo. There you go. Four nine minutes done. <laughs> um, um oh gosh. We can come back to it. No, no, hold on. <laughs> It smells like smoke in here now. Her brain is on. Her head is on oh. fire. <laughs> See, I know There's that I would. In the matrix. The, the, okay, let me talk it out. Give me just like right, thirty seconds. Go for it. I would have fun with Leatherface because he has a child's brain, and he he would have he. I know he probably wouldn't communicate because he doesn't talk. Yeah. But he would still be like the life of the party. He'd still have fun. Yeah, he'd be shy. Right. But me being an extrovert would help bring him out of it and be like, hey, guys, meet my friends. But then Michael is my icon. He's so, but he's quiet and he wouldn't talk to anybody. And like you said, he would probably try and kill them. Yeah. Oh. Uh! And then you you would be guilty by association. He'd probably kill okay. me first. I think I need I to really, change. My I really answer. do admire the the depth of thought you're putting into this. Oh, <laughs> oh you! This is this that no, this hits like this is my thing so badly. Oh my god! I think I need to tweak my answer. Okay, bit. why? I would go to a bar mm -hmm. with Michael, mm -hmm. but I would and drink. I would go drinking and tailgating with Leatherface. Oh, I thought you were gonna say strip club. No, strip clubs are gross and overrated. <laughs> I would never be caught dead in one of those. <laughs> okay, okay. I think I would go to a tailgate with Leatherface. He seems like he'd be fun at a football game. Okay, I'm gonna have to go with God, I hate I hate this answer. I'm gonna go with Leatherface. Paul, did you get yeah. an answer? Well, I'm gonna go Michael Myers because I feel like Leatherface would probably be pretty stanky after his, you know, smelly shirt fact. And you know, try to sip a wee, wee vodka and coke with somebody that smells like um, rot, <laughs> rotten, be rotten beef and shit. Yep, I'd be like, mm, it's not my thing. Plus, you know, <laughs> I think you and Mike would be best of friends once he like looks into my eyes and become best friends like he does in Halloween Ends. He probably hey, he probably wouldn't get in either because of his I, stance. I, I, I can see Tabs just getting so annoyed by that because <laughs> I feel like she doesn't like these movies. <laughs> Oh, I hate them. <laughs> I hate all of them. I, I didn't mean Halloween kills. I didn't like the other two. Yeah, no. I watched that last right. one. I was just like, oh my God, what the hell happened? It's like Halloween. It's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. I was like, what have oh, they God. done? What have they done? It's like Halloween. Oh, wrong, wrong oh. oh, sorry, Colin. Jesus Christ. Paul likes the tangent. Um, Paul, do you know how you said at the start that you think I've got an interesting mind? Yes, yeah, sir. I'm going to, I'm going to, just to set us up for the final segment, I want to sh uh, share some of my random uh, notes from the, from this episode. Uh, don't see any gore. Can't read that. Franklin annoying. Leatherface is goofy. <laughs> Actor's not very good. That's interesting. <laughs> um, sound of Chainsaw. Opening crawl. I had an opening crawl, which is pretty cool. A uh, true story question mark because it made it out like it was a true story. At the start. It, well, it, well, it's it is. It's based. It's based off of uh, the serial killer Ed Gein, mm -hmm. who used to kill the young young men and skin them. No, he he killed like two people, but his skin came from. He was a grave digger. Oh yeah, that's right. He was a grave digger. Mm -hmm. So it's including not, his own mother. It's not a full true story, but it's partially. Mm -hmm. true it's story. based. Yeah, it's based off of something that happened back in the fifties. I wrote uh, the haircuts. <laughs> uh, slaughter foreshadowing. That must have been the that must have been the, the cattle. Evil cows. And I put vegetarian question mark. I was considering it at that point. Um, <laughs> don't know what that says. What does that say? Don't pick up hitchhikers. Don't pick up hitchhikers. <laughs> Hitchhiker is Cray Gas Station something. Um <laughs> Blood on Van, Star Sign Obsession, Left Wheelchair Outside, Franklin the Killer, question mark, No <laughs> Ramp, Lack of Inclusion, 
and scary scary without mask i don't know what that says something about mask anyway was it the nice. close-up of his face where he was like that may have been it uh, so yeah, those were my random scribbles i like to do a page of random scribbles because i can then look back at them i could add one to your Just random them. scribbles and we talked about this last night and it was the fact that sally's white pants did not get dirty until she jumped out the second window yeah oh see, so she because, didn't get... <laughs> see, see, see because we are british whenever you say pants it just it's not what i'm thinking oh trousers <laughs> <laughs> sorry calling the, call the perv <laughs> <laughs> 54 minutes you can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you 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 really if you go back and watch it, like she runs through the woods, she falls multiple times, and every time she comes back in her, the next shot, her clothes are clean. Her clothes are clean until she falls out the, the second window. The the she jumped out the top one second. No, the top yeah, one was yeah. the first. Yeah, she jumped out the top one at the first. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then the, the, the second one when she was captured, yeah, right outside the, the dining room area. Yeah, yeah, so when she jumped out that, I mean, she had a cut on the back of her shirt. Her um, trousers were gross, and she had a uh, missing, like a big hole in her knee, and there yeah, was blood was, and dirt everywhere. That was all of the stuff where it was her blood, where she cut herself yeah. up. Yeah, but that's what branches. I found quite funny, that their clothes were still very clean. As they were getting murdered. Yeah. <laughs> what, what what did you think of like see towards the end? I felt like Sally's screaming was just put on loop for like at least a good twenty minutes at the end. I just felt like she was constantly screaming like the whole yeah. time. In the and in the dining room scene, yeah. She was getting chased. She was screaming when she was getting chased the whole time. And I was just like, how's her throat not getting sore from this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you were in that situation to where somebody had killed all your friends and you've seen them dead you watched your brother die in front of you like she had a lot of cough drops yeah <laughs> yeah oh I, I would run about 20 meters just give up and accept my fate i would i'd be too tired i mean yeah, why couldn't she same. just shut the why couldn't she just shut up and like hide behind a tree why did she have to keep screaming and running because <laughs> horror movies that's why horror yes. movies it wasn't in the script Co colin <laughs> what is he doing? Colin, you've muted yourself and you're messing about with the, t the screens. That wasn't what I tried to do there. I'm, I was trying to do something different, which I'll explain later, but I messed it up. Yeah, we just got a big, we just got a, just a big massive screen in your face. I know, I changed the layout. How good it wasn't just I changed the layout. I changed the layout. Um, what I was actually trying to do was um, we always ask her. Twitter friends for some of their thoughts on the movie and instead of just speaking it I was hoping to actually just make it come up on the screen and we could all read it together but I think I'll do that in advance of future podcasts because I keep hitting the button it just disappears and then I change the layout so yeah um I'll just stick to the status quo yeah no worries. No worries. I'm, I'm really looking forward to sharing one of the thoughts with you although you might have seen it on Twitter yourself anyway you never know. <laughs> uh, if if it's if it's the one I'm thinking that you're about to say, then yes, I I seen it. Which one? Oh, we'll, hold on, we'll get, let him go. We'll, we'll get we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get to. It. So, before we hear other people's views, um, is there any additional things you guys want to talk about in terms of things you loved or didn't love or I memorable scenes overall. for you? I love the overall story of it. I, mm -hmm. It's it's one of my favorites. It's one I always like to go back and revisit. I I like 2003s more than 74s. Yeah. But that's because they had more to work with now and they had better production. Oh yeah. Again, if you guys get a chance, that explains and fills in a lot of stuff that wasn't there in 74. Mm -hmm. But it was yeah. good for that that time era. Oh yeah, it definitely set the bar. Uh, for our slashers, it really wasn't what I was expecting. Like I didn't expect it to be so kind of old school. 
and yeah. kind of low budget, um, just with obviously how big the franchise is now. But I think that was a big part of its charm as well. Yeah, because I'd seen it being was it banned in places as well, and mm-hmm. then I was expect I was expecting it just be like blood and guts and gore everywhere, and like you were saying, there's like barely anything at all. Like that's all kind of your imagination when it comes to. It. Yeah, it definitely is one that can kind of your that, your imagination could run a little wild. But that's with. what makes the good classic horror films like yeah. Halloween seventy eight. <laughs> Friday the, Friday 13th, the 13th, Nightmare, on Elm, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, you have to use your imagination to put things together. Like, okay, the dude just got pulled into a, a room. Like, what has happened to him? Like, that's that, that it gets you thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because sometimes it can be a bit of a CGI fest and you just you get a bit scunnered with it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you would fit in really well with these guys because. Paul loves coming up with little wee inconsistencies in films and like wee tiny bits that annoy him as well. So I think Paul would fit right in. Oh yeah. Nah, I'm just I'm just skeptical as well. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't enjoy movies really. I don't. <laughs> we we do have one more. We do have one more question, okay. which I think Let's will be it. a bit easier than the last one for some people. Okay. Um, I tried to keep them all kind of like would you rather is with the kind of horror theme. So would you rather get pulled into the, the back room with Leatherface or receive a phone call from Ghostface? Ghostface. I knew you were going to say Scream it. is my favorite <laughs> horror franchise. Yes. 100% Ghostface. It's not supposed there. to be a good thing. Like, <laughs> we're not supposed to enjoy it. <laughs> Well, it might depend on which ghost face is it that's calling me. That's is yeah. It Stu, Billy, Roman. Yeah. Who is it? Um, <laughs> I hope it's not Roman. Oh God, yeah, you're done deadliest. for. Yeah. Why are you prepared or not? Just because you'd want to speak to them, or be- you think that would be a? You could survive ghost face over Leatherface. Face? I think so. That's the way that I'm looking at this question. Is is if I got drug into the back room? Look, I'm no Sydney Prescott. Sorry, Queen Sydney Prescott. You, yeah, you but, are not, not Sydney not Prescott. Her. No, not at all. I'm more of a Randy. Yeah, I'd get to <laughs> the first you, one. And to be fair, there's a loophole in the question because Colin said it was just a phone call. We never said what happens after the phone call. So oh, yeah. you, you know what happens after the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've only seen the first and the most recent Scream films. They're the best. <laughs> They're the best. I, They're when I say so most recent, fun. I've seen the most recent. I've seen it in cinema, um, and I've seen the original, but I've not seen the other ones. Mm. Ooh, they're so good. Especially because the Colin probably hasn't seen it, and Paul probably watched it in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know if it, just roll a dice, and whatever number it lands on, that's the Scream film you watch, since there's <laughs> six of them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then after the seventh one, you have to get one of the D and D dices that are like ten and yeah. all that. <laughs> Whatever. I really did. <laughs> I really enjoyed both of them. Um, I had a great time at the cinema with the, oh, the newest one. The second one has the most suspenseful. The second scream has the most suspenseful scene that you will ever, it, yeah. ever encounter in cinematography. Yeah, ever, ever, is. ever, ever. Uh, yeah. Ooh, it's I, intense. Ooh, it's intense. Ooh. Even more tense than when uh, Luke and Leia had a kiss in Empire. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I, I have to fit in my I'm no, allowed. Star me, Wars. Me, me, me and Paul <laughs> talked about doing a Star Wars podcast, then decided on a more kind of general movie and TV. So I'm allowed one Star Wars reference. I was actually thinking I've not done. I don't think I've done one, so I just had to. There we go. That was good. Yeah. That was a good segue. If you have Star Wars or Harry Potter, it slides in one or two. <laughs> um, yes, there'll be one. So who's all answered? I, you answered I have not. No, I think I would have to go. With? I think I'm going to go with. Um, I think I'm going to go with Leatherface on this one. Just because I want to see what's behind the door. Interesting. Oh, and are you, are you looking forward to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game? You can really see what's behind the door. 
Yeah. I don't play video games. What consoles are coming out on? Next gen, PS5 and Xbox, I think. Let me get that. It looks looks damn good. So I think it gives you like a full tour of the house and that, doesn't it? In the basement and the underground Mm -hmm. tunnels and stuff. So you'll be able to see what's behind the door. Sounds fun. Oh, yeah. What about you then, Paul? Who are you going for? Uh, Probably say Ghostface. Because like when he asks you like questions at the start, got my smartphone with me, look up IMDb. Anyway. <laughs> How do I survive? Yeah, guess to, guess to the end, they'd be like, oh yeah, you got your questions right, so yeah, you're okay, you're fine, you're safe. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I ask our guests a, a question? I just had an idea. Okay. We're, we're all about kind of cross-promotion. How would you feel if we dedicated this segment where we ask three questions to you guys and we give you a wee shout out and we do a would you rather yeah oh yeah yeah, absolutely absolutely. because i quite enjoyed doing the would you rathers it was actually easier than coming up with like a general question yeah Yeah, no 100 yeah do it it's it's always like who's your favorite character what was your favorite song but is you can be a bit more creative because i'm actually quite i'm actually quite chuffed with the wee scenarios i came up with for no, a, those are for, fantastic. For, for, for not an expert on horror movies, I feel like they were at least quite fun for you guys. Hopefully, well, if you yeah. ever need horror movie experts, you know who to who to <laughs> message. Yeah, hit us up. Yes, definitely. But yeah, follow you up for that. We'll we'll give a wee Grey's Tap Room shout out when we do our our three questions a week. Yep, it'll be the Grey's Tap Room podcast trademark. Would you rather? Oh yeah, Aww. awesome. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Go. Thank you guys. <laughs> right, I think it's uh, about time to put the, the scores in the doors for the seismic scores. So, given the movie a rating out of 10, and guests normally go first and give okay. their give their score. I'm going to, I think I also am going to go, I'm going to give it, you know, I might hit a 7.5. I might hit it, hit it with a 7.5. 7.5? 7. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I was quite surprised. I thought, I thought, like, see when you jumped on, I was like, oh, they're going to be like tens for sure. But it's, <laughs> I think they're big fans of the franchise. Maybe yeah, not yeah, necessarily yeah. this one as such. Yeah, it makes so, me feel a bit better because when I had to give a rating for the thing, I was like quaking in my boots because Paul and James have given it a, a ten. I'm pretty sure. That yeah. is a very very fantastic movie. Yeah, even the remake. Oh, for sure. It's hard. Um, it's, it's hard to give a a score though when both of your guests are like proper like fanboys, and it's like <laughs> if I don't put ten, I'm getting lynched. So what do I do? I'm not scared. I'll fight you. Come on. <laughs> but I've decided I'm going to be more true to myself, and I'm just going to give my my score. Of course. <laughs> my can't score be, can't be a oh, sheep sorry. particularly in this film. It's tabs. Um, what you, what you score, my score is going to be, again, like yours, a 7.5. Yeah. Where did it, what were the major fall downs? Like what chopped off the two and a half? For me, it's because, I mean, if you're going to have a movie called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hmm. There you, needs you, to be more than gotta, four people. There needs to be more massacre. <laughs> I like the story. I did, even though the acting was not mediocre. It was mediocre. I still enjoyed it mm-hmm. because you had a whole bunch of unexperienced actors, mm-hmm. and they they did pretty solid for you know the lack mm-hmm. of work that they had prior. And that as time, far as I know, that time and, era as yeah. well. Uh, and the conditions that they had to go through <sighs> just on set was grueling. Yeah, I I wouldn't do it. I would. I mean, I would, but I, I wouldn't, would. I wouldn't enjoy it. My name is a part of a movie, not, a big movie. I'd well, do it. In the Texas heat, you gotta. I'd do still this, do it. That and okay. you're being put through so much. You're just a pansy. You don't know the stuff they had to go through. <sighs> it was rough. I, John Dugan told me a lot. I know. <laughs> he told I me know. a bunch. I know. He's like, dude, this yeah. filming this movie yeah. sucked. Um, yeah. the reason for my score is fantastic movie, great storyline, acting was meh, mediocre. Um, it just, it it was. Again, my imagination, it put me in that scenario. So what what would happen if I went and my car broke down or I picked up a hitchhiker like it? it, That's what made it real to me. And that's why I gave it the score that I did. Yeah, 
I actually saw that uh, in Texas, I think it was Texas, the crime rate went down because people did legitimately stop picking up hitchhikers because of this film, so it's probably saved less. Yeah. <laughs> yes, probably. I, I definitely wouldn't be picking people up now. No, I'll never pick up a hitchhiker. Unless you drive for Uber. <laughs> yeah. Which I've done for, yeah. <laughs> and Lyft. You've picked I've, up hitchhikers. I've done both, yeah. Technically hitchhikers. What about you, PK? Uh, oh, I'm probably going to go, I think, a 6.5. I don't know. I think it's maybe because, like, you know, like, through all the years, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre has been, like, such a big thing, and it's been hyped up so much for me. Like, I've seen all the bits where it's been banned and things, and I was like, oh, it must, like I was saying, it must be, like, really gory, really quite graphic. Mm-hmm. And it actually wasn't. Um and I don't know, I just find the characters a wee bit because you didn't really find out much about them, you only got really their names and that was it. I find it hard that like, when they died, I wasn't really kind of like bothered by it. I was like, Oh well, he's dead. Oh, they didn't give dead. you enough backstory for yeah. them. They didn't give yeah. you enough uh emotional connection. hmm Exactly. So I just I I mean I wasn't too bothered by the characters themselves. Uh it just get the get a wee bit grating towards the end with the screaming. I thought just for me personally, I just thought the screaming yeah. and Franklin saying Sally, Sally, Sally about forty million times. I'll I'll hear Sally in my sleep. Um <laughs> mine was Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. 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 <laughs> but I did enjoy it though. It was like it was a good a good fun time. From the start, I liked the hitchhiker segment. And then the segment when she got captured at well, when the Franklin got sliced up. Like I, I felt in between that there was a wee bit kinda of a lull just because they were just searching about and there wasn't a lot happening. But other than that, I did enjoy it. Oh, it was quite yeah. a good good film for like back that kind of day and age and uh, the the budget it was on. So yeah, I did it's, enjoy it. It's a good movie for background noise or like when you're having a party and everybody's hammered. <laughs> it's a good it's a good summertime horror movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, what happened? What happened to the truck driver at the end, though? Does that ever get he, that's what I'm saying. The guy that jumped out of the he truck and kept running. Kept going. Yeah. He, he said, "Dude, piss on this. I am gone." Yep. Sequel. Like, Sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Spin off. What you, you call? What's your? What was your? Well, rating? I originally had written down because I actually do my planning way in advance of the pods now because I feel like doing the planning and the pod in the one day is quite a lot. So. Uh, I wrote down 6.5 before uh, because, again, it, maybe it wasn't quite, as you were saying, what I expected and that there wasn't that much violence and it was quite understated. And I think, yeah, the acting did take me out it a wee bit, but I did enjoy the kind of suspense, as we were saying earlier, like on the bus and at the, the gas station. And I really did enjoy the first half of the film more than the end. However, I'm I'm pretty well known for getting a bit sleepy towards the end of films sometimes, <laughs> depending on the day. Um, however, I decided to upgrade it to a seven because I think our I feel like a lot of the time when I do the review, I appreciate the film more because I'm talking about it with people who have also watched it and get another perspective. And I feel like. Um, I think that added it to me, the, the discussion about the music and how that, or the lack of music, kind of enhanced some of the scenes. Um, and I think just re-watching it, or re-watching most of it, knowing what it was like, I think you appreciate a lot of the the nuances more, see, the big words on the podcast. Um, so yeah, I've decided to upgrade it to a 7, but I am quite keen to check out the 2003 one, because People seem to swear by that. Oh yeah. yeah well, up next. in in the 2003, when you get more character, there's a lot more character development. Oh yeah. You have more ex- an, an experienced cast. Mm-hmm. Um, the storytelling is is a mm-hmm. lot better. Yep. And there's more chainsaw massacre in it. Right. And it's it's courier. Yeah. It's got Arlie Emery in it. The goat. <laughs> Surely, surely somebody uh, complained about um, misleading advertising for this film. Surely, someone somewhere complained. Yeah, some, somebody sued somebody for something. 
<laughs> not, not enough massacre. Anyway, just before we finish up, just wanted to share a couple of tweets from some of our, our friends on Twitter. Um, I'm going to save the best one for last. I'm also I'm going to give the first shout out to our very own Taproom Tabby, who watched it last night by carved Jacko Melon watermelons. So they're watermelons instead of um, pumpkins. Um, the photos are really cool. Um, check them out on Twitter if you haven't seen them. I think something about sitting watching it by pumpkin light in the middle of July was was quite interesting, and it reminds you you can make you can make any night whatever um, season you want it to be. So that was cool. A uh, the Phantom Jukebox or Phantom Jukebox. There's no other. Um, it was the first movie to scare the poop out of me as a little kid because uh, he put a poop emoji. Uh, but in a way where I couldn't stop watching it, I credit to getting me into the horror genre. And they also said, Silence of the Lambs is the goat. Um, and Craig from What's the Script, who, and thank you, Craig, for getting involved in all our posts. He first saw it as a five to six year old. No comments. Um, around 83, 84. His parents had rented it. He got up early to Saturday to watch it. And he said he was more stunned than frightened. And he prepares the 2003 reboot too. Uh, he also commented on Jessica Biel being in it, and he said, so, yeah, lol. Who <laughs> <laughs> really likes Jessica Biel. Who um, doesn't? That's just. Oh, Timberlake. she is so fine in that movie, too. <laughs> that's, that's Justin Timberlake's wife, leave her alone. Um, <laughs> that aside, though, some great writing, a lot more character depth, as you were saying, as well as gore and scares. I think I really will need to check that one out. Is that on Amazon, Paul? Do we buy it? I don't know. I don't know. Have a look anyway. And then we'll don't know, maybe, we, maybe we can all revisit it one day. Yeah. I could come over for a movie night, Paul, and we could watch it and I could not eat Doritos. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> well, we just, we said we really need your addresses because we're going to mail you a copy. Yeah. We'll send you a copy. Oh, wow, cool. <laughs> you think we're much. joking? We will. Yeah. And stickers. So you get stickers and a copy of 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. Nice. Yes, and then if we ever get we'll, merchandise, we'll send it over to you. There we go. I'll I'll stick my address in the chat after. Please do. Up. Yeah, send it to us. And uh, this is the the creme de la creme from our good friend Stu World Order. I'm honestly not a bit. This isn't as controversial now that we've given our scores. When I first read it, I was like, "Oh, they're going to hate this." Uh, I'm not a big fan of this at all. The acting sucks. It looks cheap as hell. And the last half hour or so is just mm -hmm. an obnoxious cacophony of screaming and cackling. It gives me a headache. <laughs> so Stu's not a fan. Stu is not a fan of a lot of the movies that we like. We have already come he to this does. conclusion. He, Stu hates on a lot of stuff. I mean, The Strangers and The Strangers 2, shit all over it. Both po great. Pooped all over them. Both great films. And they're <laughs> great films, but oh my gosh. Have know. you worked with Stu before? No. Have not. I guess he's delightful. We had him on for Halloween. It was great fun. <laughs> yeah, I guess when you don't understand horror films, it's easy to right. mess all over it. It's, it's funny though because I mean, he absolutely, he absolutely loves Halloween too. He loves the Halloween yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't like that. Well, he <laughs> likes them, but he likes them in a different order that should be liked, and That's that why triggered me because we we watch things in the wrong order. <laughs> no, but he ranked them in a different order. He's saying, yeah. Paul, have you got any any podcast you've been checking out this week you want to mention? Oh, you, to be honest, too busy I'm bowling. Not, too busy I'm, bowling. Yeah, to be honest, I've been bowling too much. I've not listened to barely anything. I think the only thing I won't listen to was probably in the past two or three weeks. Actually, it's probably been what's the script? And they did American Pie: The Wedding just because I was driving and had like an hour to kill, and I ended up watching American Pie: The Wedding that night. Because of it, so it's quite funny. Um, but, yeah, I've not been listening to film. anything at all. I've been bowling, 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 or working, working, working. Okay, Paul, yeah. you've got to you've got to put you first sometimes. <laughs> or editing, um, editing as well. It takes forever. I've listened yeah. to a few of um, Grey's Taproom's podcasts. I've been listening to a bit of the movies that can't be made, and a wee bit of the Toxic Fandoms one as well. Oh, if you listen to the Power Rangers one, you'll love it. Oh, I listened to some of that a while ago, not recently. 
And yeah, we used to be big Power Rangers fans back in the day when we were kids. Uh, we all were, man. Yeah, yeah. I, still, I still am. Power Rangers Light Speed Rescue, one of the the goat the goat games. <laughs> um, I also listened to a wee bit, or actually, pretty much all of it. The Bill reads bad reviews. Um, his review of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So I managed to get my Harry Potter shout in as well. So mm. are you go. okay, guys? You just press for time. No, no, no. The kid. Sorry. You're right. No, it's yeah. not, that was no we're just uh, we're just uh, finishing up anyway. So, uh, guys, do you want to just give a wee end of podcast shout out to yourselves? Yeah, uh, we're awesome, and you should listen to us because we're uh, awesome. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, shout out to us because we're awesome. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely follow these guys, like and subscribe. I just want to say a. Uh, a very sincere thanks because one we messed up the time zones last week and then two we had to cancel last minute and um i felt so bad about it but you guys were so cool so that's why i gave you oh, so hey, don't give it give a wee shout out on twitter as well so so people are really your, we're, we're people. parents also man we get it yeah so yeah thank so, you yeah, for thanks so much home. for coming on and um, it was fun to catch this film meet you guys and we're definitely up for coming on and having you back on in the future. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go. Can't wait to do this again. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Love you guys. You're the best. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. We love you guys. Too. Okay. Right. See you soon. Bye.